What's up guys? Today I want to show you how to draw a landscape like Thomas Kincaid on your iPhone. So normally when I paint, I do it in a traditional sense, like with oils or acrylics on canvas. But, like many of you guys, I have a full-time job which restricts me on time to do these things, so I figured, why not do both? So when I was really bored at work this week, I decided to draw this painting on my iPhone. And so in this video, I just wanted to show you the possibilities of what you could come up with with a limited set of tools at your disposal. I'm not using any fancy painting app, but just the basic drawing tools that the iPhone 12 has in its photo editor. The specific tool I'm using is the one on the left, the pen. That's it. So the painting I'm working on is called Twilight Cottage. I'm going to be painting this portion of the painting because the iPhone does have a limited range at which I could zoom in. So anyways, let's get started. I start off painting the top part, the background where the sky meets the trees. A few minutes into painting this, I notice how much more convenient it is for me to have the colors I picked in my palette already, whereas with traditional painting I have to constantly reapply paint from the tube and mix it on the palette. The progress I make in this painting is much faster than I had expected. I'm making this in a fraction of the time if I were to paint the same thing on the canvas. One tool I found myself using a great deal was the transparency tool, or the opacity tool. This one helps immensely when you're trying to blend colors. You see, the default drawing tools in this phone don't have any blending tools, so I'm using the next best thing which is this transparency adjuster. I simply paint the transparent color on top of the previous one, and if I want to darken the color, I continue brushing until I create the effect that I want, by just stacking up the layers of color. Even though the painting platform is completely different this time, the same principles still apply that I have been using. If you have watched my other videos, I go in depth with tutorials on painting landscapes and especially trees, so I left links for those in case you're curious to see how I go about it. So if you ever get confused about anything I'm doing here, I do have full length tutorials where I cover more in depth about painting landscapes and things like trees and foliage. When I draw these pine trees, I start off from the back and move towards the front. Colors are extremely desaturated, but they harmonize because there is a great amount of variety. The tool I keep using is the transparency, and it's helping a great deal with this part, and really giving me a speed advantage over the real paints. When you paint these trees, make sure that the edges of the branches are soft where they touch the sky. This will be a reoccurring theme in landscape paintings, and especially true with Kincaid style painting where many objects blend into another to create a more ethereal atmosphere. As I'm going across these surfaces here, I'm smoothing over the original layer. I'm also adding some textures down here because this will be in an area with a lot of foliage. Let's set this aside for the time being and start working on this tree. Painting tree trunks and branches in landscapes is pretty self-explanatory. It's so much easier here though because I don't have to worry about keeping a paintbrush sharp and wet to apply the detail. Anyways, a few minutes later after I started painting this, my phone's photos program crashed and I had to reload this photo. So lesson learned, be careful when you're drawing complex things on this program. If you make too many changes in one photo or drawing, the memory is going to build up in that one drawing, causing a higher likelihood of crashing. What I recommend is from time to time take a screenshot of this drawing because it resets the memory and then just use this new file to continue drawing. So this is a good side tangent to remember. So now I'm starting to paint the orange background leaves here. I set the opacity pretty low here so I can have the edges of these leaves feather into the background and then at a later time I'll stack more layers on top. I found this really easy to do with this opacity tool in this phone, so I can really accelerate the process. Now I go back and elaborate more on the pine trees. I add some more desaturated colors here since these trees are closer to the background, but notice how I start to use more vivid greens here for the leaves in the front. This is very helpful to distinguish between the leaves in the front versus the ones in the back, and you'll notice this effect a lot in Kincaid's paintings. Now I start to work on the cottage walls. The walls here are made of stones, but I won't paint the individual stones until later on. What I do instead is add a variety of color on the wall that blends together with the brown, ranging on different parts of the spectrum where these colors will eventually become the colors of the individual stones. Some parts will be darker than others, so in the beginning here I'm establishing the foundation of a color and value. The cottage roof will need some blending up here as well because it's a smoother surface. I use some color variety up here as well, but it's more subtle because the color is more homogeneous than the walls of the cottage. I continue on in the bottom half of this drawing, getting in the basic shapes and format here to set the stage for later on when I start to add more detail. I'm not too concerned about anything else right now except for filling up the space. 
An important reason to get all its space filled up is because it helps you out with your perspective on color and value. If you focus in on one spot for too long, but have all the surrounding areas completely blank with white space, it will make picking out the colors and values too difficult. Once I get that out of the way, let's zero in on this area here and get some more detail going with the foliage and flower patches here. I'm treating this drawing just like if I were to be painting this. Except here now, I'm almost always using the transparency tool to help me have more control over how much color I apply. That's what's so great about this tool. If the color is too dark, I just keep brushing and adding layers of this color until it gets lighter. My approach to drawing on here is much more loose than if I would be painting on the canvas. I can adjust the size and transparency of the brush here so I can easily go back and forth with the layers. I'm going to increase the chroma and value of the pink color here, but keep the transparency low so I can have more control over how much I apply on here. As I'm adding these flower patches here, I'm transitioning them from dark to light as they come out from the background. Okay, let's take a break from doing that and move on to something else. Let's do some more work on this cottage. I want to add some more polish on this window, so once again I use the transparency here to smooth over the transition. Then I continue to add more variety of color and value to the walls here. You can see how I'm using a hint of green in some places along with some dark brown, blending them together. I want to finish the side of the cottage here, so I work on refining the edge of it. Don't make the edge here too sharp, but have just a hint of a transition here. Next, I start to add in the mortar in these walls, so that we can see the individual stones that create this cottage. This part will require more precision, so take your time with this. Once again, I'm using transparency with this brush, and carefully applying the color. If you find yourself making some of these corners too sharp, increase the transparency and round out the edges wherever you need to. Then I switch to a darker brown or gray color and work on adding more depths to the individual stones. Apply a small amount because you don't want to go overboard on this part. Another great tool I started using was a ruler. It really helps speed up the process of drawing straight lines here. Just draw a thin line and if you want to feather out the edges, just increase the transparency and add a slightly thicker line. It's a cool technique that I just discovered, and you can use it for a lot of other things. So let's take a break from this part and once again do something different. So far I'd say I had a relatively easy time getting all the items in the right places, but painting these rocks in their positions took some extra effort. I paint the basic colors and values for a foundation here, and as soon as I feel comfortable with it, I start to elaborate more on a few rocks down here. I make sure I use desaturated tones here, so that I can bring out the highlights in a few select areas. When I work on these rocks, I add textures to them, so any light areas I add dark spots, which later on I will once again go over. That's kind of a science behind the uh, painting textures, and the same principle applies to other parts of the landscape. The concept of working from dark to light doesn't always apply here, because in this situation we're going to be constantly going back and forth between light and shadow, painting layers of color and value over each other until we are able to sculpt the right formation of these rocks. So I eventually get to a point where I'm comfortable with what I have so far, and move on to something else. By the way, this is just my own opinion that it's good to take breaks between painting specific parts of the landscape. The reason is because spending too much time on one thing eventually breaks my focus causing me to make more mistakes. Let's work on this grassy area. Here I want to add some texture, and so I'll be using the same principles here as with the rocks. You can see that I'm adding the dark spots, and with this I'm using color variety as well here, some black but also some dark green. And of course, keep the brush partially transparent so that you can blend together some of these areas. Once I get enough of that, I add the lighter parts of the grass on top. I'm using at least two different shades of green, because when you paint a flat surface, it's important to use color variety to make it look better. Then I rinse and repeat, add some more dark again, and lighten up the last part. Now I want to go and add texture to the road. I'm using the same principles with the layering the darker and lighter values here, except this time I'm using horizontal brushing. It's another flat surface, so using color variety is important. Now let's paint some water. This part is going to have a different approach. Here in the beginning we are spreading a variety of color here in the river. Painting this part is going to involve the equal amounts of smoothly blending together the colors as well as adding textures in some areas, especially because we do have a small waterfall going on over here, which will have quite a few ripples. I don't initially blend the colors here, which is pretty obvious, but eventually I will once again get a main idea of what colors and values go where. Notice how I'm using some shades of blue and aquamarine here. For both of the colors, I'm using desaturated versions of them, and will eventually have them more blended together. 
When I do notice an area that's ready for bleeding, I set the transparency to a higher degree or set the opacity to a lower degree and I'm applying an assortment of color here. I'm using lots of horizontal brushing here. By the way, there is no blending tool in this program. I'm just constantly setting the opacity to a low level so the brush can be more transparent. So this is what I plan on doing for the rest of the water later on. Notice how this part of the water already starts to look more polished. I think you get the idea. Let's take a break from this part and move on to something else. Let's go back to this orange tree. So you can see I have finished painting the basic foundation colors of the leaves. Now I add a slightly brighter version of this color. Mind you, it's still a very desaturated version of orange. It just looks more vivid because of the background. I spent some time covering up some of the previous layer, but still try to retain some of the edges so that the leaves kind of disappear into the background. I'll be working on layers here, from dark to light to dark to light. Once I get this part down, I switch to a slightly darker but more orange color. I retrace my steps and cover up some areas, but this time I'm not covering everything because I want to leave some of the previous layer visible. This way it helps add more depth to the clusters of leaves that are going to be coming out in this tree. Also, I'm starting new clusters of leaves in some places. This helps with variety and plus I'll be stacking more color on top of there anyways. Then I do this part again with an even more darker version of orange. This time I'm being more selective on where I add these small patches of color. Make sure to use variety with this also. Alternate the size and shape of these dark spots and group some of them together. So once that's done, let's start to add the light again. I return now to a basic version of orange which is still slightly desaturated, and begin to add the final layer of leaves. Once again, keep the brush transparent so that way you can adjust not only the transparency here, but the degree of brightness. So spend a few minutes doing this, and we will add the final layer which will be the brightest. So same thing here as last time, except be more deliberate with the brushing. Paint the leaf cluster, but also paint some smaller ones here and there. And also, leave some open space so that we can still see parts of the previous layer. I have more detailed videos about how to paint trees as well, which I left links for. So this flower bush here is already started. Painting this is going to be just like when I painted the tree. You're going to have layers of color and value here. We're going from a medium value red color, then to a darker value, then lighter again with the most vivid and bright reds. It's a really simple process, and this transparency in the marker tool makes it that much easier. Go back and forth multiple times if you like. Remember, this is a digital drawing, so don't worry about smudging any colors here together if you paint too much. This painting is really starting to come along so far. The precision of this marker is pretty helpful, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this turns out. I'm getting deeper into this painting, and I'm getting things done so quickly. I'm using the ruler for help with any sharp edges, and drawing every detail here is a breeze. So now I'm starting to draw the mist here where the rocks meet the river. I'm turning down my opacity very low so I can have a much easier time blending it all together. The colors are pretty much the same as the river, and you'll have much more control over how bright or dark some areas will be because of the transparency. I'm starting off with darker shades so that it will be easier to have smoother edges of what I paint here. I'll come back here shortly to finish off this part. Let's work again here in the water. I'm going to do some more blending along with adding more textures. The ripples in the water need to transition smoothly amongst each other. This is important to remember because once everything is in place and blended, that's when I would start adding more of the textures where the smallest details start to show. Notice these small clusters of dots I'm painting here. You've probably already noticed how I've been using this layering method for many other things in this painting so far. Keep the opacity very low and use a diverse variety of how you go about painting these. Once I get enough of these, then I add the brightest layer over some of these dark areas. This is the way I do things here, using layers of color and value, and applying texture. Rinse and repeat. Don't go overboard with these bright colors. Remember you have control over how bright you can make it with the transparency tool. When you're painting landscapes, you're going to have areas that have a mix of both smooth blending and defined areas with more rough textures. It's important to strike a balance between the two, but sometimes you're going to make something that leans more towards one of these attributes. I go back and forth with color and value, shading in some more aquamarine color, and smoothing it over in some areas. I start to brighten up the mist as well, finding spots where I carefully paint the smallest details. Let's see what we have so far. 
The painting is coming close to being finished, but we still have many areas that either need some more polish or more work done. Now I'm going to move to this part of the water and work on the waterfall here. Same principles here, except you'll be using more bright colors. Work from big to small, get those clusters of color and value aligned, then work on the detail. Painting things like this that have lots of small random shapes can seem daunting, but following this formula I've been doing helps resolve this issue. As importantly, don't be afraid of going back over on something because that's what we've already been doing here by using so many layers. So painting something like this will require going back and forth with layers. Okay, so take some time to go back and fix any spots that need improvement. Patch up any gaps you may have here, or blend together any tight spots that have inconsistent color or value. Okay, I think that's enough. Let's see this painting. The way we painted it with just a marker and transparency tool can result in some interesting effects. From a distance, the painting can look smooth and well put together, but if you zoom in close, you can still kind of see the marker and some of its overlapping. Using this technology for drawing does have its limitations, and so if you paint it in a traditional manner you could get more dynamic results and better detail. However, I was able to draw this overall in a relatively quick manner. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and was able to see how you could still draw something really complex with limited tools if you follow the right principles. Leave a comment below, and consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will try drawing other things on my iPhone. Thank you for watching.